In this video, I'm going to talk about steam locomotive drafting systems. Actually, this is going to be a two-part video. The first will be the basics of drafting systems in relation to steam locomotive operation, how they work, and why they are important. In the second video, we're going to look at three different designs of exhaust nozzles and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each one. So, if you think you already have a pretty good grasp of the basics of drafting concepts, you might want to skip ahead to part two. Hi, I'm Eric, and welcome to my channel. What's it about? Well, pretty much whatever I want. I've always been a photographer, and with this channel I have a new outlet to showcase those images I've collected over the years and are still collecting. My goal? To take things I'm interested in and share them with all of you. You might find yourself going to a place you've never heard of, or learning about something you never understood. So stick with me, and you never know what's coming up next. Now, before I move into the rest of this video, I want to discuss one of the main reasons I have such a fascination with railroading, and that is, railroading is a clear display of mechanical evolution. Since the first railroads were developed in the early 1800s, you can see a clear path of development and design. With hundreds of thousands of railroad cars out there in circulation and tens of thousands of locomotives, each generation has to be compatible with the one before it. Much like the information technology field, where each new iteration of Windows has to be compatible with all the software that was designed to run on the version previous, or even two or three versions ago. But while IT gets a new generation every two to four years, railroading takes around 20 years, and it's only in the last 50 years or so that development has had the benefit of computer modeling. For nearly 200 years previous, development in railroad technology was done pretty much empirically. Someone came up with an idea, then tested it. If it worked, then it might get adopted. If not, then they moved on to the next idea. And these ideas are driven by things like increased efficiency, ease of construction, and reduced maintenance. So let's turn our attention now to steam locomotive drafting systems and why they're important. And also as a side note, I'm going to do this old school chalkboard style. No fancy graphics here. I find this to be a little more interactive. So here we have the layout of a typical fire tube horizontal steam locomotive boiler. We've got our fire here in the fire box. It doesn't matter if it's uh, coal, oil, propane, wood. Whoops. All right, so the fire box is surrounded by water, of course. All right. Now, the products of combustion of the fire, the smoke basically, the exhaust gases, they go through these tubes here, through the boiler, and then into the smoke box at the front, and then of course, <clears throat> we want them to go out the stack to atmosphere. So you're gonna notice something here different than you know your typical fireplace at home where the stack or the chimney is up at the front of the locomotive versus whereas if you think about a fireplace you know your chimney is right above where the fire is so your all of your exhaust gases have to go from your firebox here at the rear all the way horizontally through this boiler up to the smoke box in order to get out the chimney now since heat rises you would think that they're not naturally going to want to flow in this direction. So why would the builders have designed a locomotive boiler like this where the smoke has to travel such a long horizontal distance in order to escape to atmosphere? Well, remember the name of the game is heat transfer. The goal is to get as much heat from the fire into the water. So by making your exhaust passage longer by the length of these tubes and having it have to run through here as versus straight up, we're allowing more of this heat, which rises to get into the, to heat the water through the crown sheet or through the tubes before the heat is lost up the stack. So 
the heat, of course, since heat rises, to, in order to get the heat to go up to the front or the smoke box, um, it's not naturally going to want to do that. So that's where the drafting system comes in. All right, so now let's take a look at the steam side of things. So the steam is going to collect in the steam dome, which is at the top of the boiler. And this is typically on a lot of steam locomotives, especially older ones, this is where your throttle valve is located. So when the engineer pulls uh, the rod in order to open the throttle, steam is going to go through the throttle valve and down into the dry pipe, which is going to run up to the front of the locomotive, again into the smoke box. Now, if it's a superheater locomotive, it's going to run back through these exhaust passages through your superheaters. That's probably more superheaters than you typically have. Then it's going to go into, it's going to branch off into two pipes going down the cylinders. Ironically, they're called branch pipes. And they go down to your cylinders, all right? So in the cylinders, your steam is going to push your piston in order to make your piston go. So once the steam has pushed the piston to the end of its stroke, all right, now steam's going to come through your emission valves. Your emission valve is going to direct it to come on the other side of the piston and push the piston back this way. So remember, you've got two sets of pistons, one on either side of the locomotive. The pistons push your rods, which turn your wheels. They're double acting pistons, so for each revolution of the wheels, you get four piston strokes. After the steam, the exhaust steam, comes out of the pistons, it's going to go, it's going to exhaust up through an exhaust nozzle in the smoke box and exhaust out the stack. So with four piston strokes per revolution of the drivers, that's four exhausts per revolution. And it's those exhausts, that's where you get your chuff, 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 chuff sound that's common on steam locomotives. So as this exhaust steam goes through this exhaust nozzle and blasts up the stack, it's going to create a vacuum behind it. It's going to create an area of negative pressure in the smoke box. So as you get an area of negative pressure in the smoke box, that's going to draw all of your exhaust gases from the fire are going to be drawn to the smoke box to go out the stack along with the exhaust steam. So as these get drawn this way, then atmospheric pressure is going to want to create a balance of pressure. You got negative pressure up here, then you develop negative pressure in your firebox. So now you're going to want to, uh, atmospheric pressure is going to push in air and through your dampers or your coal bed or whatever you have into your fire um, in order to balance that pressure. So as the air is coming in your firebox, what does the air contain? Oxygen. And of course, we need oxygen in order to burn. So the more air, the more oxygen we get into our fire, the hotter our fire burns, the more water we boil, the more steam we generate, the more steam we have to push our pistons, the more exhaust you have going out the stack, which creates more vacuum, which fans your fire, brings in more draft, brings in more oxygen, makes the fire hotter, it uh, boils more water, makes more steam, and on and on and on and on and on. So it's really just a big cycle. Now, this concept was recognized by early developers of steam locomotives way back in the early 1800s. And what they were trying to do was they were trying to exhaust their steam into the smoke box in order to muffle the noise of the exhaust because the exhausting steam was loud and they were trying to quiet that and muffle that. So they thought, well, well if we run the exhaust steam into the chimney, then that will muffle that noise so it won't be so loud. But what they didn't expect or what they eventually they realized when they did that is with the, they piped the exhaust steam into the chimney, the fire burned hotter and they were able to boil more water and produce more steam and actually save on fuel. They experimented with various orifices at the end of the exhaust line, but it was many years before anybody really understood the physical concepts that were at work here. All right, so let's assume that we've got a boiler of 200 pounds per square inch, 200 PSI. Engineers can open the throttle wide, the engine's working, wants the engine to work hard. Steam is gonna flow through the throttle, through the dry pipe, through the superheaters, down here to the cylinders, and we're gonna get 200 pounds per square inch pushing against the piston. This is what's known as chest pressure. 
So the 200 pounds per square inch are gonna push against the piston, push the piston this way. It's gonna connect, uh, the piston rod's gonna connect through the cross head to the main rod, to the wheels, make the wheels go round and round and make the locomotive go. So what happens when the piston gets to the end of its stroke? So at the end of its stroke, then the ignition valves are gonna let steam come in to the other side. So you're gonna get 200 PSI on the other side of the piston. Well, it's trying to push the piston this way, but if you had still had 200 pounds per square inch on this side, you'd have equilibrium and the piston's not gonna go anywhere and you're just gonna stall. So as I mentioned before, this is where the exhaust valve opens and allows that steam to go, uh, to go into the smoke box through the exhaust nozzle and then out the stack. This is called back pressure. So we need a certain amount of back pressure to force the steam out the stack. Otherwise, if you have, you know, if this was zero, then the steam would basically just linger in the smoke box and it wouldn't go anywhere. Now, general convention would indicate that the more pressure you have, the more steam you have or the more pressure you have going out the exhaust, the more vacuum you're going to create and the better your draft is going to be. But if you had 100 pounds of steam of back pressure against 200 pounds of chest pressure, you only have a difference of 100 pounds in order to actually do work of the locomotive. So it'd be equivalent to having a boiler of only 100 PSI instead of 200 PSI. So we need to keep the back pressure as low as possible to get the most work out of the pistons while still getting as much draft as we can for the fire. See where, I'm, see where this is going? Now the design of this exhaust nozzle right here turns out to be the critical element in this whole system. Now this is where I'm going to end part one. In part two, we will look more in depth at the design of the exhaust nozzle and how we can optimize its performance, explaining how they work through the demonstration of three different nozzle designs. These are some pretty complicated ideas utilizing mathematical formulas derived from theories of fluid dynamics, but I'll break it down into general concepts that should hopefully be easy to understand. Stay tuned.